Hey everybody, my name is Mr. Francie and welcome or welcome back to Mr. Francie Reads. Okay, so today we are doing my CSL5, that is Completed SAS List Series number 5, which is the To All the Boys I Love Before trilogy. For those of you who don't know, I do uh, series wrap-ups every time I finish a series on my SAS list. This is the fifth one. Feel free to go and check out the other four that I've done so far to this point. Okay, some important statistics to uh, be mindful of. This series is a YA romance series written by Jenny Hahn. So therefore, the target audience is teenagers, and the target audience when it comes to the genre is those who love lovey-dovey teenage books. YA romance in a nutshell right there. Okay, this was overall a really interesting series for me. If you think of the bell curve, um, but I don't know, if you think of like a, a 2D drawing of a mountain, that is this stories from this series for me in graph form. It started off uh, with the first half of book one with me actually considering DNFing it, but by the end of book two, I was I was enjoying this series so much that I continued on to book number two. I really liked book number two. Uh, it uh, featured things in it that I loved from book one, and the things I did not love from book one seemed to be gone in book two. So I really really enjoyed book number two. Then book number three really was a bit of a downer for me, didn't enjoy it as much at all, but oh well, it was the way that the series was ended. So there you go, very much like a going up and down a mountain. You kind of go up, 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 up to the mountain, you get to the top, you're really enjoying the view, and then you need to go all the way down the mountain again to get to where it is that you're going, and that was very much the tra trajectory of my experience when it came to this series. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, discuss with you all three books in a spoiler-free way, and then if we have some time uh, towards the end, I'll add in some spoilery thoughts. But at the moment, this is going to be spoiler-free. So let's start off with book number one. To all the boys I loved before. Yes, I made that noise for a reason. <laughs> Even though you're having an audio experience with me, I am still holding the books in my hands because when you're a booktuber and you've been on booktube for over three years, even when no one can see you, it's a habit that you still hold the book in your hands and hold it up as though you do have a camera that you're showing a book to. <laughs> Is it just me? <laughs> But I do. There's something about holding the book while you're talking about it. And it's not a camera thing per se. It's just holding the the physical book while you're talking about the book. I don't know. Just physically holding it. It's a good experience. Do, am I making any sense? If I am, let me know in the comments below. If I'm not, let me know in the comments below. Okay. Book one. I am holding it, even though you can't see me. Just tapped it again to prove it. Okay, let's keep going. It's called To All the Boys I Loved Before. Once again, it is a YA romance written by Jenny Hahn. And ultimately, I gave this book a total of four stars. So the premise of this book is that we follow Lara Jean, a girl who has written five boys she likes a letter that she never intended to send. But when they do get sent out unbeknownst to her, Lara Jean's world turns upside down. So to my thoughts on this book, honestly was considering DNFing, as I said earlier, this as the beginning. Lara Jean seemed too immature to me, and it just felt like the kind of book that wasn't for me. I'm so glad I gave it a chance, though, as I really grew to appreciate it more and more as I kept reading. I loved the characters, I really enjoyed the plot, and cannot wait to get into book number two, um, which, yeah, at the, by the time I was done... Uh, okay, sorry. So it's a tough one to rate, and I think a better rating would be 3.75, but I'll round it up to four stars. Okay, so yeah, I... Mm, it is. It is a very tough one to rate because the first half, as I say, I was considering DNFing. It just wasn't working for me. I can say this because it's really not a spoiler. Uh, Lara Jean came across as quite immature to me in the first half, and I mean... Lara Jean came across to me a well-read reader when it comes to age group uh, statistics in books, came across to me as a middle grade uh, character and not a YA. And this is uh, written as a YA series, so young adult series. So it really not only confused me, but was really boring me because she was so freaking immature and I don't like immature characters, unless there is a really good reason why your character is immature. Do not place your immature character book in front of me, because it's really, really going to let me down. Now, 
If you have someone who has gone through an incredibly horrible breakup and then they are immature to their ex, that is fine. There's a reason why they are doing what they're doing. But if they're immature just because they're immature and there's no real good reason, keep those books away from me. They annoy me. There is no reason to be immature, especially an immature to the age rating of a middle grade when it is a YA book. It makes no sense to me. However, the second half, as I say, really did pick up. Yeah, not really a lot else I can say about this spoiler free. Um, as the premise that I gave you is incredibly succinct. So I will just expand upon that. Yes, it's true. We follow Lara Jean. Yes, it's true. She has written five boys that she loved a letter. She placed them into a hat box that her, like a memory box that her mother gave her. Her mother's no longer alive. Um, but her mother, while she was alive, gave her this hat box and she's putting the letters in there for safekeeping. She never intended to send these letters. I think it was just a way for Lara Jean to process her feelings at the time that she had crushes and that she loved these boys and I mean it's more crushes because she never got with these boys at the time so she was living out that fantasy in the letter as opposed to doing something about it in reality but you know the letters unbeknownst to her are sent out and things eventuate from there so the second half of the book forced Lara Jean to grow up because of the fact that the letters were sent out and I really did appreciate that I appreciated what sending the letters out did because it uh it uh, forced some responses to come out of these boys who may have had no idea <laughs> uh, of uh, the, how she felt. But yeah, overall, I gave the book four stars uh, because I rounded it up from 3.75 because the second half of the book was just so good and compelled me to want to pick up book number two. So let's move on to book number two then. And book number two is this book, P.S. I Still Love You. Once again, it is written by Jenny Hard. Once again, it is a YA romance. And I gave this book 4.5 stars. There were things that I liked in book one. There were things I did not like in book one. I went into book two anxious because I, I didn't know which way Jenny Han was going to go, but I knew she was going to go one of two ways. She was either going to expand upon and elaborate on the things I did not like in book one, or she was going to expand upon or elaborate on the things I did like in book one. Actually, there's three ways. Or she was going to expand upon and elaborate upon both. And in this case, she expanded upon and elaborated upon the things I loved and cut out the things I did not love, which is why it got 4.5 stars. Book two is the golden medal book of the series. It is the gem of the series, which is incredibly interesting because a lot of series that I read, the middle book suffers from what we as readers lightheartedly refer to as middle book syndrome, where not a lot happens. It's just a way to expand the series and it's a lead up especially in a trilogy book two is generally the the book where it's the lead up to the final book to the big climax the overall conclusion that we're going to experience in book three but not in this one it's really funny because book two was the gem of the series and had it been a duology i think i would have thought of this series very differently in a more favorable light than moving on to book three I have to be honest. But anyway, the premise of book two is that uh, in this one, Lara Jean and uh, Peter's moment... Okay, okay, so I need to actually explain that. Okay, in book one, Lara Jean and a guy named Peter... I'm saying this spoiler-free. And a guy named Peter end up in a hot tub together. Okay, that's all you need to know. That's all I'm going to tell you, spoiler-free. Okay, in book two, Lara Jean and Peter's moment in the hot tub is posted online by someone known as Anona B., it hurts Lara Jean, and um, she's not only hurt by the image, but by the suggestion by the poster that she and Peter were having S-E-G-G-S, because apparently I can't say that word on booktube. <laughs> there is also a fun game version of Assassin being played, where the winner gets their one wish fulfilled. Finally, uh, and finally, the last hold out to Lara Jean's letters responds, but how will this affect her relationship with Peter? That is a very um, <laughs> inconsistent premise that I've just given you there. Okay, yes. So a couple of different things to unpack. So 
As I said, in book one, Lara Jean and a boy named Peter are in a hot tub together. In book two, someone has, we find out someone had taken a picture while they were in the hot tub. They weren't doing anything, but the poster was implying that they were. And of course, this is hurting Lara Jean because not only were she and Peter not alone, someone saw them and took advantage of that, but they've also posted it publicly online and it's insinuating that she has had S-E-G-G-S when in fact she hasn't and she is still a V-I-R-G-I-N. Can I say that word? Really? I don't know. YouTube makes life hard sometimes. <laughs> anyway, let's keep going. Um, so there's that. We're dealing with that. And so in, in a way, there was a mystery to the second book in that who is this Anonabi? And I don't recall if they are actually referred to as Anonabi or Anona and the B word that I won't say on this channel, but the, you know, the B word that rhymes with an itch that you might have. Okay. One day, I'm just not going to care what YouTube say, and I'm just going to say words because it'll be easier. But anyway, so, okay, so we have this unknown antagonist, which very much reminded me of Pretty Little Liars. If you've read the series or watched the series, we have an unknown antagonist known as A, in that series, in book two of this series, we have an unknown antagonist known as Anona B or Anona B with the B word. And so we're trying to work out who that is. And of course, that is hurting Lara Jean. Okay, so in book one, we I referred to how Lara Jean wrote letters. She wrote a total of five letters to all the boys she had loved before. Four of them got back to her in book one. In book two, the fifth one got back to her. So how will that affect how things are going with her. Okay, so let's talk about my thoughts. Okay, so to unpack it but keep it brief, I really enjoyed the um, uh, unknown antagonist trope. Um, so yeah, I was enjoying that there was a mystery element. I love that this came up in a romance book and enjoyed trying to figure out who it was. I also enjoyed seeing the final letter responder get back to Lara Jean, as well as what ensued from there. I've grown to love Lara Jean as a character and cannot wait to see how things turn out in book number three. So yeah, unbelievably, I started book one, the first half, wanting to DNF because Lara Jean is so immature and I can't stand her. So in book two, I absolutely love Lara Jean and I can't wait. I need to get more. Now, in book one, Lara Jean has two love interests. She ends up with one of them by the end of book two. I preferred the one she ended up... I'm trying to keep this spoiler free. I preferred the one she ended up with. In book two, that continues. I feared that she would go back to love interest number one in book two, but she didn't. I appreciate that because I like... I prefer her with love interest number two. Okay. Let's move on to book number three then, shall we? And book three is called Always and Forever Lara Jean. Once again, it is by Jenny Hahn. And once again, it is a YA romance. And I gave this particular book three stars because I, in between reading P.S. I Still Love You and picking up Always and Forever Lara Jean in that space between... Yes, I'm not quite trying to quote a Disney song there, but in that space in between, I was on top of that mountain. I was so happy. I was basking in that sun. What an amazing series. I can't believe I nearly DNF'd it in uh, halfway through book one, but the second half of book one and all of book two is absolutely amazing. Give me, give me, give me book three. I need to read it now. Oh my gosh, I love this series. Then I picked up Always and Forever Lara Jean, and the series just plummeted for me. I'll explain why. So the premise of this one is that Lara Jean has applied to college and has a plan mapped out for her and her boyfriend. He's already been accepted into college via early admittance. Now she just needs to be accepted. But when she's outright rejected, not even put on the wait list, what will she do and how will this affect her and her relationship? So my thoughts on this one is, I liked seeing the genuine heart and head struggle between what's best for a relationship 
her heart versus what's best for her education, her head, a lot. But otherwise, this book for me was just a way to wrap up the series. Because we were dealing with college acceptance letters right off the bat, it felt like the end of the series at the beginning of the book, and therefore it felt like it just dragged things out from there. I'm not saying it's a bad book, not at all, just saying it did not work for me. The ending was incredibly abrupt also in my opinion, however I did like how the ending wrapped up. A solid three stars. So, okay. Here's the thing. Had Jenny Han made the decision to make this a duology with To All The Boys I Loved Before and P.S. I Still Love You, I would have walked away saying, amazing series. What an amazing character growth for Lara Jean. What an amazing romance, an intriguing mystery, an amazing plot. I love the characters. This is fantastic. I highly recommend. The problem was that Jenny Han decided, in, and this is again in my opinion, I shouldn't have to say that, but I will in case you're all wondering, saying this is what everyone else thinks. If you think that, no, this is what I personally think. It's just my thought alone. If you disagree, that's totally fine, but it's my channel so I'm giving you my own thoughts. In book three, with book three, I felt like it was just written to wrap up the series, and while that generally works with a series, or this is a trilogy, so let's be more specific and talk about trilogies, in the case of a trilogy, as I was mentioning earlier, book two usually serves as a middle book that leads us into book three where we experience our final climax for whatever genre it is. It doesn't matter, matter what the genre is. The third book is the final book. So we have the big bang final moment that happens, the final conclusion, final climax that occurs in the series. But in this one, things seem to wrap up really well at the end of book two, and so the only way they could go with book three was, oh yeah, now let's talk about college. Yeah, it didn't work for me because it's a YA series. If it were an adult series, fine. If there was a book that came after this, fine. But my problem with this is that we were introducing a new aspect into book three that we couldn't follow up with in another book. By that I mean we're talking about going through the application process for college with Lara Jean, as I was saying with the premise, she wasn't accepted or even waitlisted to the college that her boyfriend is going to go to, and then we spend a lot of the rest of the book with her getting worried and trying to apply for other places to go to college and all this. What is the point of that when there is no other book, so we can't even follow her going to college? I mean, I guess Jenny Han was just trying to wrap it up and say, this is the end of her high school experience, and at the end of high school, you apply for college. But it just, it felt like so much effort for no payoff at all, because we don't get to follow her as she transitions into college. So it just didn't make any sense to me at all. And because she was applying, uh, because we were talking about college applications, right from the get-go in chapter one, it felt like, oh, yes, this is her growing up, this is us finishing off the series in chapter one, okay, now we need to drag this out for another however many chapters before we get to the end. So, overall, I thought that the book was good if I'm judging it on its own merit. It was a good book. If it was a standalone, I would have really appreciated it. I think as a standalone, this would be great as a YA standalone. The battle between heart and head. When you're young and you're experiencing young love, especially in high school, you think that that is the be-all and end-all. But education is just as important. So you have that battle, uh, the internal battle of heart versus head, and what are you going to do? And so as a standalone, I think it's a great idea. But connected to this series, it just did not work for me. So... Yeah, look, I, it's a tough one. I grew to love Lara Jean, uh, over the course of the series. I grew to love Lara Jean's boyfriend over the course of the series. I grew to love Lara Jean's family over the course of the series. My goodness, her father is an amazing father. Her younger sister, who I don't remember her name, but her younger sister, I love. She is so full of life. And her older sister, we don't see a lot of, but I need to give a shout out to the actress who played the role of her older sister in, uh, in To All The Boys I Loved Before. And I cannot believe I can't remember her name, but uh, if you know Pretty Little Liars, you know Mona Vanderwall is the character she played in that, and I can't think of what her name is. Janelle Parrish. So a big shout out to Janelle Parrish, because I loved her in 
Pretty Little Liars. And then, so the fact that she was in the first film as Lara Jean's older sister, I did appreciate that a lot. But I didn't watch the entire first film. I think I watched the first quarter and then, you know, DNF'd the film uh, because it just wasn't working for me overall. But yeah, anyway, uh, so just all in all to some general thoughts, um, as I said, I, yeah, I, I, thought that it was good judging it on its own merits but judging it in relation and in connection with the other two books as part of a series I just felt like it was a pointless book and I gave it an average rating because I found it to be an average book when you're connecting it to the series overall as a whole. All right, I'm going to go into some spoilers now uh, for the series overall, so we'll put a spoiler tag up on the screen. Uh, if you don't want any spoilers, totally fair. Just continue to scroll along with the video when you no longer see the spoiler tag anymore. Come back and rejoin because I'll do some spoiler-free stuff to wrap up the video. Okay. Spoiler, spoiler, spoiler. This is the spoiler section. Spoiler, spoiler, spoiler. You have been warned. All right. That's enough time to scroll or pause. I'm jumping in. I'm talking spoilers. Okay. I loved the fact that Lara, that, that, um, I love the fact that the letters were sent out because I think that's what prompted the growth of Lara Jean to go from being an immature character to one that started to mature. I loved when we got the reveal. I think, is her name Kitty? I can't remember, but I love when we got the reveal that it was her younger sister who sent them out by mistake. She didn't mean to, but she sent them out anyway, and I praise her for doing that. I mentioned earlier how much I love the sister, and I do. She's so vivacious and full of life, and I just, yeah, love that about her. A lot of um, younger siblings, when it comes to YA books, come across as really immature, but to me, while her younger sister has moments of immaturity, she's actually quite in intelligent, um, not only just intellectually intelligent, but she's also quite emotionally intelligent, and I appreciated that as well. We don't really get to see a lot of the older sister, and she certainly has quite a bit of a tood in the final book with the, um, her father getting married to that woman and all that, and I didn't really appreciate that, to be honest, um, but yeah, you know, I think she, obviously, the older sister did a lot for Lara Jean growing up, and I do appreciate that. And I spoke about her father. I think he's a great guy. He's a single father, obviously, because of the death of her mum, and he's just doing everything he can to raise his girls. And I just think he's an all-round great good, great dad and great dad character. Um, the woman that he marries took me a while to get on board with her, but I think all in all, she introduced some vivacity into his life. And so I did appreciate it uh, coming from that end. Okay, let's talk about the love interests. Okay, I don't remember the name of the first guy, and I'm not going to go back and try and find it, but the first guy that she either kissed or whatever that she was in a relationship with, I thought that he was the next-door neighbour. I thought that he was a great guy to be a friend with, but I just never found there to be any good chemistry as far as romantically between him and Lara Jean. But with Peter, I definitely did find that. I loved that they created a set of rules for one another when it came to their dating. Like, Lara G needs to do this, 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 and Peter needs to do this, this, this. And <laughs> I just, I thought that was great, having a relationship contract for students in high school. I just, yeah, I think that added um, a different, a new dimension and a, a new layer to the series overall as a whole. I appreciate that she was with Peter for pretty much the majority of the series overall and that they didn't break up because, you know, there could have been moments where it might break up because I think they did have a moment of separation in the third book, which is understandable given the plot line of Heart versus Head with everything going on. But what I mean is I'm glad that she didn't break up with him and end up dating other boys in the series, which she could have done because, I mean, book one is literally called To All the Boys I Loved Before. So she could have had multiple romances throughout the series, but I appreciate that she didn't and that she and Peter stayed loyal to each other for the majority of the series. I really do appreciate that. And uh, especially considering that Peter, there are a lot of other girls interested in him. So I appreciate that he stuck by her side for the majority of it. Um, I love that he believes in them no matter what, whether they go to the same school or, or not. Uh, but I also appreciated the what uh, Lara Jean went through psychologically and as far as how it will affect the relationship with the fact that she didn't get in, how it's going to affect her, that she didn't get into this school that she had planned on getting into this whole time and just having to deal with that. I think that uh, Jenny Han approached the topic really well and did a good job with it. 
I think overall the series was was good. Oh yeah, I want to talk about the mis- uh, the mysterious Anonymy in book number two. I mean, look, I love the whole you know um, what do you call it uh, the anonymous antagonist thing in books, but I n- did not at all expect to have an anonymous antagonist in book num in a in a book in a romance series. So that was something that, while it's very different and may turn a lot of romance readers off, as someone who loves my mysteries, I really appreciated it and appreciated trying to work out who Anonymy was and what their motivations were behind doing what they did. And I loved the reveal. I loved everything about that whole thing. I just thought that was fantastic as well. All in all, I thought that this was just a fantastic series. I think the first half, as I say, I struggled with, um, oh, uh, with, um, Lara Jean's immaturity, but having her sister, her younger sister send out those letters certainly forced her to grow up. And I appreciated her a whole lot more with her being forced to grow up, uh, as the series did go along. I think the way the book ended, it ended incredibly well. I was very proud of the, the way that it wrapped up, but I, you know, the cons definitely include the fact that we were wrapping up the series from chapter one in the final book. And I did not like that. I wish that book number two had created an opening for us to explore in book number three. And then we started wrapping up the series from three quarters of the way through the final book and not from the very first sentence of the final book. So it just made me feel that overall attached to the series, the book, third book just was not necessary. But as a standalone, it would have been amazing. So yeah, do you see what I mean? Connected to the series? No, but on its own would have been great. And judging it on its own and not connected to the series, I did think that the story on its own was good. <laughs> All right, let's uh, take the spoiler tag screen, uh, spoiler tag off the screen and just wrap up with some spoiler free thoughts. Overall, it was a good series. I, yeah, it's it's tough to get past what Jenny Han decided to do with book three, but I do think overall that it was a, a really good series. I appreciated the dimensions and layers that were added to this series. It wasn't a straight up romance series. There were different things that came up here and there in different books that added all these different layers to each specific book and the series overall as a whole that kept it incredibly interesting. The fact that we have Lara Jean dating one guy for the majority of the series could have made it very boring if we didn't have a lot of side plots going on with different things that were introduced throughout the way. So I really did appreciate that and the majority of the side plots that were introduced were incredibly intriguing as well. So it kept my interest throughout the majority of the series. Yeah, all in all, I think it was a good series. I think if you go in, know that she's immature at the beginning, know that the series starts wrapping up right at the beginning of book three. But if that's not something that turns you off, then I do highly recommend picking up the series. I thought that the book series was really good. I thought that the uh, film adaptation of book one, I DNF'd it. Um, a quarter into the um, film because I just wasn't enjoying it, to be honest. But I think overall that the book series was fantastic and I do highly recommend it. It was a solid YA romance series. And overall for the series as a whole, I'm probably going to give it four stars. And that is, um, it is not five stars based largely on the way that the series wrapped up way too soon from chapter one in book three. Had that not occurred, it probably would have been a 4.5 star rating for me because the immaturity of book one does need to be taken into consideration. But overall, a very solid YA romance read that I do highly recommend. But in the meantime, that is where I am going to leave it. So if you have any comments, thoughts, and or questions, or anything that you wish to add to this video, please do not hesitate to let me know in the comments section below. But in the meantime, I'm going to let you all go with peace, blessings, and so, so, so much love. Please do be kind and love one another and spread your sparkling energy all throughout the world. And until next time, happy reading. Bye everyone!